Hello, Witch Enthusiasts. Now, today I have a piece to speak about which presents simply astounding value as far as a dive watch goes. And this is a piece which I was incredibly pleasantly surprised by. And I must admit, whilst first wearing it, I was amazed by the fact that this watch was able to be offered for the price it's offered for. And so it really did deserve to be on the channel. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it's rare to come across an example where, um, where within the first few minutes, I'm already confident of the quality of the product. And with several days wear of this piece, I can say that I'm, I'm, I'm blown away, quite frankly, by what's been provided here. And this piece is the Zoretto Jota, so that's um, J-O-T-A, you could pronounce it Jota, but being a student of Spanish, um, inevitably I end up pronouncing it Jota. Um, and it's a piece which is a thousand metre dive watch in a vintage style which shows an inspiration from a number of mid-century dive watches, and some which are, are extremely influential, such as the, the, the Yeni or Jenny divers, um, which had 700 and 1,000 metre versions of their watches, which share some case cues with this watch. But I'll speak more about that when I speak about the case. But suffice to say that for a price which I'd like you to bear in mind throughout this review of a standard price of 599 US dollars and a, a sale price of 529, I think this piece is, is quite astounding. And as always, I'd like to give my usual statement that I'm not being paid to say anything positive about this watch. Um, and I think it's, it's important to make that very clear. Um, when I, uh, I, I organise a, a review, um, I, I like to make, uh, make very certain that if once I receive the watch I, I'm not satisfied with the quality, or I wouldn't recommend it to a friend, I won't show it on the channel. And so I, I do like to make that very clear, because I feel it would be disingenuous to show a product which I don't genuinely believe in as a, a quality item. But the watch itself is interesting to start off with uh, where case design and case build is concerned, because that's the element of this watch you'll come across uh, most immediately because this watch is sizable. There's no other way of putting it. It's a large watch, but not large enough to make it uncomfortable for even someone with a relatively small wrist. And I'll explain that as I go through the video, because it's a very complex case design, which appears simple at first, but actually has a lot of elements which only appear when you really give it um, close examination. Because this case is, um, is stainless steel, is 316L stainless steel, and is fully polished, as you can see, from the sides of the case to the tops of the lugs, to the case back, with the exception of some elements, which are, uh, are, are bead blasted, such as these elements here. Um, and I'll talk about the, the, the pros and cons of different elements of the case as I go through. But in terms of dimensions, the watch is 43mm from side to side, and 44.5mm from each side of that bezel with its slight overhang for ease of, of grip. You then have a 50.5mm lug to lug length, which is shorter than I would expect on a case size um, like this, and then a 14.6mm thickness from the back of the case to the top of the crystal. And for a 1,000 metre dive watch, this is by no means unreasonable, and actually is smaller than a lot of 1,000 metre dive watches on the market, which I think is something to bear in mind that this watch is designed towards a market um, of professional dive watches, and Zoretto do make smaller dive watches with lesser water resistances um, if you don't need a 1,000 metres. In fact, who does need a 1,000 metres since the, the maximum theoretical dive ever, ever achieved was 701 metres, and that wasn't even in the sea. But even so, I think one doesn't buy these watches for use, rather it's because one can say one has a 1,000 metre water-resistant watch, and one can enjoy the technology that's involved there, which is uh, pretty astounding when one considers the, the, the amount of pressure exerted on a watch. And then, in order to be able to survive this sort of, uh, this sort of, uh, this sort of beating that a watch will take under that sort of pressure, if one looks to this side of the case, one sees the watch has a really very deeply signed, this isn't simply laser-etched, you'll notice there is real depth to that signature, um, seven and a half millimetre thick crown. And that's a significant size. It's unguarded as well, but it's sunken ever so slightly into the case, as you can see, and so is seated very, very well into the into the case, and so is somewhat protected by the bezel as well. But it's very well designed, very classic in form, and has three gaskets in there to, to ensure the, the water resistance of the watch. Then, looking at the side of the watch, you may also have noticed the fact it has drilled lugs. And the lugs on this watch are, are, are nice and thick. They're not... Um, the, 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 the drilling on the lugs isn't precariously close to the edge, which can sometimes be a problem, and they're generally well designed. Then one, uh, one also has divergent lugs. Now this is something which has been taken from those, those Yeni um, Caribbean dive watches of the 19, uh, 1960s and 70s, because one sees along the, um, the, the edges of the lugs that they diverge outwards like horns. And this does create a few complications whilst also making ch strap changing a little bit easier. Because when changing the, the strap, um, because the, come, the watch comes on a bracelet, which is a Beads of Rice style bracelet, which I'll show you because it's beautifully finished, um, or indeed this, this rather delightful calf um, leather strap, which has been embossed, but extremely deeply embossed, as you can see the graining is, is extremely well finished, 
um, and it looks like Stingray, which I think is a, is a wonderful look for a watch strap, whilst not going through the ethical problems um, and concerns which I think are, are always involved with exotic um, uh, hides being used for straps. And it's extremely well backed as well with a very supple and very resilient calf skin, and then nicely, nicely stitched in this chocolate brown. And the fact they're divergent makes it easier to change straps, because one can slide the, um, the spring bar in from the outside. Changing bracelets is more complicated with this design, because bracelet changing is always complicated no matter what. Um, it requires spring bar pliers in a lot of cases, and, and, and can um, cause a lot of scratches on the back of the lugs. And with this it can be complicated, because due to the, the divergent nature of them, the bracelet is inevitably going to try and shoot out lengthways from the watch whilst you're trying to put it in, so it takes some fiddling around, and I did put a few scratches on the watch trying to, to swap between this bracelet and the strap for the purposes of the review, but I must say it's not too big a concern as long as you take your time and you're careful. Then elsewhere, you'll look on, you'll, you can see on this side of the case, the watch has a helium escape valve, which is also polished and rimmed in that way, which allows, um, for those who aren't familiar with helium escape valves, saturation divers, those are very professional divers who use diving bells and, and will live under under high pressure for, for extended periods of time, sometimes up to a month. And once they're down there, due to the increased pressure, helium um, yeah, molecules, so H2, uh, HE2, sorry, is ab are able to, to penetrate the seals of the case, and thus when you rise again, there is the, the, the danger in, with some watches without a valve of blowing the crystal out as the pressure um, hold, pressing down on the watch is reduced as you surface. And so in the case of this watch, one has a valve to release that pressure, which does show the, the diving credentials of this watch, though admittedly a lot of watches these days with modern seals don't really have this problem. But it's a useful feature nonetheless if you're going to be a saturation diver, and for everyone else, it's just an attractive piece to see on the side of the case and adds a bit of a story to the watch. And again, just a little bit more of that technological um, mastery that, that one sees in, in professional dive watches. Then moving to the bezel, one has a 120-click bezel, which has this fine knurling, which is not dissimilar to the 1960s and 70s bezels on Squalis. And so it rotates with 120 clicks extremely crisply and with no play at all. And there really is nothing in this bezel, which I think is phenomenal. And it has a very short sort of, um, sort of action to it, and it's very crisp in its clickiness. And you can see it rotates very easily, and there's absolutely no problem with grip due to the, uh, the size of the bezel, but also due to the fact that it overhangs the case ever so slightly. And in, the, uh, in the, 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 the insert of the bezel, one sees a fully luminous treatment um, for every five minutes. And the insert itself is sapphire. It's flat sapphire, which is, uh, which is put in. And whilst some may say that that's a more old-fashioned solution um, than a ceramic bezel, I rather like sapphire because it gives this translucence, as you can see, and matches the crystal of the watch beautifully, whilst also giving a slight greater, slightly greater depth to the coloration, which in this case is black. But you can also have the watch in blue. Or, and it's worth considering, there is the version um, in black with a 24-hour graduated bezel for use as a, a sort of a semi-GMT timer or using it as um, a timer for the hours. And that comes in black, um, but the blue version just comes with this dive bezel. Then, if one looks inwards, I think a detail which I find very attractive is that surrounding the, the inside of that bezel, there's another metal rim. And this means that you have this nice framing for the bezel, and the bezel plays off in that very vintage style because due to its translucence, it could be perceived as, um, as, as plexiglass or, um, or bakelite, which was the material of choice in the past. But of course, with the incredible hardness um, of uh, nine on the Mohs scale um, of this, uh, this, this sapphire insert. And so one has the best of both worlds in that regard. Then the crystal also is in sapphire, and it's a 3.3 millimeter thick sapphire crystal, which is subtly domed and does have this, um, this uh, anti-reflective treatment. As you can see, there's no, um, there's no problem with legibility. In fact, one can read it right the way to the most extreme of angles, where, frankly, one wouldn't be reading the time anyway. But it's a nice, uh, a nice attention to detail, and especially for this price, it's quite astounding. Now, turning the watch over, one can see on the case back, and I removed the bracelet to be able to show you this more clearly, that this watch has this very heavily um, domed case back, but the, the back of it's actually flat, but one sees this domed element here, although in the opposite direction to a normal watch, and this does make the watch quite significantly thick at 14.6 millimetres. But thanks to the polished elements, I think it looks absolutely glorious with all of these, um, these smooth contours and lines, and most importantly, with that flat section in the centre. And the, the way this is designed with the large uh, Z for, for Zoretto in the, the centre, 1,000 metres, um, and also it's given away the movement, but I'll talk about that in a moment, one sees an element of IWC. And whilst it doesn't look like an IWC case back per se, the fact that it has these six circular um, divots looks 
uh, very submarine-like and, and does remind me of some IWC aqua, uh, aqua timers. Now, having uh, now shown you the, the, uh, the movement choice, as you can see it's written on the case back, it has an ETA2824-2, which is another element where I think it's, it's incredible they're able to offer this for the price. And whilst I, I was somewhat sceptical of the quality of the movement before receiving the watch, because I think it's, it's very difficult to have movement which is regulated properly and, uh, and prepared for this price, they've done an extremely good job because this watch runs, in the case of uh, this example which I've been, uh, I've been testing, at 0.5 uh, seconds fast a day, which is just about perfect. Um, I really couldn't expect any better. And granted, with time, that might vary. Um, and certainly I've had watches where the, the, uh, the timings fluctuated, but over the, the amount of the few days I've been wearing it, with my usual rhythm of life, it's, it's been keeping time extremely well in, in those sorts of realms of ever so slightly fast, which is exactly the way I like a watch to be. And otherwise, the movement is automatic, and it's a Swiss-made movement, and whilst I, I, I don't think this is going to be a, um, a, a higher grade of ETA, but rather it's going to be one of the, the more simple ETA2824s, it's certainly running very, very well, and it's a very good movement in terms of being very, very well tested, and is most probably the, the best tested movement in the world in terms of numbers made um, where Swiss movements are concerned. So it has 25 joules, runs at 4 hertz, so you get those 8 ticks a second, giving a very smooth tick to the second hand, and also has a 38-hour power reserve, which is perfectly adequate. And so I think this 25 joule movement is, is really the ideal choice for this watch, as a, a well-tested, robust movement, but with a nice design and, um, and a build which is, is reliable and very easily serviced. Of course, the dial is something to consider as well with this watch, because as you can see, in, this, in the case of my, my example here, this has a beautiful black dial, and it's mirror polished, as you can see, to this, uh, this, this, this mirror finish, which is also helped by the dome of that crystal. As you can see, there's a slight coloration to the antique reflective coating. But it also has four applied indices, and the rest are painted on. So you can see that the one at uh, 12, the one at 3, 6, and 9 are applied um, indices in this baton style, which, uh, which extend across the dial and are very heavily loomed. It also has luminous indices around these, these edges as well. And whilst they may be smaller, I think uh, one shouldn't underestimate them because the brightness of this watch is, is, is incredible, frankly. Again, for the price, it's very, very impressively done. And thanks to that luminous bezel as well, which you'll see in the, um, in the loom shot, it does very, very well. The hands are very well detailed, and whilst they don't have quite the sharp, crisp edges one would see, for example, from Zodiac or an Omega, the price of this watch is half that of the Zodiac, and, um, and over five or six times less than the Omega, so frankly it's not that comparable. But one can see that they're, they're beveled down their centre, and whilst I may criticise them for their sharpness, for this price they're still much better than what I would expect from the competition, which is, is very, very impressive, especially considering there's already so much to love about this watch. And they take the form of these, these unique forms, which are sort of sword-shaped and very classic in form, but also quite futuristic. And so I like the fact the minute hand has a pointed tip to the loom plot, whilst the hour hand has a flat tip, and then one has the, the second hand, which is luminous and, and also tapered to a, to a complete point, rather than just having a, an equa equally, um, a equally shaped tip, which one often sees on this style of hand. Then you'll notice the dial has very limited text. Of course, it doesn't have Swiss made, because the rest of the watch isn't made in Switzerland, um, and I respect them for not trying to put anything there instead, um, because I feel that it, it's trying to be something it isn't, with a 1,000 metres at the bottom of the dial, 3,300 3, feet, Zaretto automatic at the top, and the date, which is nicely detailed, as you can see, with a softly curved inwards um, edge to the date window, once sees a matching black date wheel, which, uh, which is a good touch at 4.30, and allows it to not be in any way intrusive, um, and, and remains discreet, but still gives you the information that's so useful of having the date. Now, at this point in the video, I feel I should talk about some of the accessories which also come with the watch. So, in addition to receiving the, uh, the, the watch head itself, of course, and then, of course, this, uh, this rather attractive leather strap which I've spoken about, one also receives um, a, a metal bracelet. But you do also receive a, a tool like this, if I can just get it into focus. These are fairly standard equipment, and these allow one to um, simply pop a spring bar out by inserting it into the... Uh, into the, um, the, the drilled lug there. And whilst I would recommend using a conventional spring bar tool for the process, that can make it easier if you can't quite reach the inside of the, um, the, the edge of the, the lug. But the watch also comes on a bracelet, and I've taken it off to give you a good look at it. And, and this is the bracelet. It comes with a, a brushed clasp, as you can see, as well as this beads of rice style to the bracelet. Now this is sized to my wrist, and so it does come in a much longer length. The, uh, the links are screwed, 
um, as you can see, and these are double-sided screwed, uh, screwed links. So each of these screws uh, actually screw into each other. So the uh, the bar which holds each link together is independent from the the individual parts within the the link. And this means, um, in terms of uh, advantages and disadvantages, that if you do uh, by by chance damage a screw, you can simply replace the screw rather than having to replace the link as well, which is a real convenience and I think is something which more brands should include. And it's somewhere between the way, for example, an Omega bracelet works, where you have a bar between the, um, the, the, the inside of the link and then a screw on each side, so you drop the, 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 the bar within it out of one side after removing the screw like some sort of cap. Instead, these screw into each other to form a bar and don't screw into the links themselves. But the detailing on the bracelet is excellent. As you can see, this Beads of Rice style is very, very well detailed in polished steel, and the whole back is, uh, is brushed. The sides are also brushed, and the finesse of the brushing is absolutely phenomenal, and, and really does show the versatility of the brand, because as you can see, the, the clasp has a very fine brushing with beveled edges as well. And in terms of what the, the clasp offers, it offers a twin trigger release, so if one presses it like so, it opens up. And as you can see, they've gone even to the, the extent of adding perlage to the inside of the, uh, the, the elbow joint of the, the clasp, which I think is just a fantastic demonstration of the care taken, because this is completely superfluous. Um, it really isn't needed to, um, to, 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 to make the watch any more functional, but it adds just that little bit of beauty to the watch when you, when you take it off, off the wrist, which is just the sort of thing which makes one smile. And, and I think it's, it shows a real, amount, a real uh, degree of care taken. Now, there isn't any micro-adjustment in the conventional sense with different slots, but there's a better solution to that, and something which I've seen more uh, seen increasingly recently, where brands use this style of uh, twin trigger, and this is actually one bar, so they operate um, together. You pull these back, and then one gets a ratcheting dive clasp, and so this gives you an extra length of bracelet, um, which you can quickly deploy, and then ratchets back in. You can, you can uh, stop it, in fact, at any point along that, um, that run, so that you can get just the right fit, whether your wrist expands or contracts. And so I think that's a very attractive uh, setup for the bracelet, and fits the watch extremely well. And the bracelet doesn't taper down from the 22mm at the watch's lugs, um, and so remains that thickness at the clasp. Otherwise, the packaging of the watch is, is relatively simple but well conceived, because you receive this carrying case, which is uh, plastic, but very strong, very hard and very resilient plastic, with this loop to, to hang it on something. And also, it does have a seal inside, which means that this is watertight. So if you want to travel with the watch, this might be a, a quite convenient way of travelling around and also keeping accessories in there inside the, uh, the foam uh, packaging inside, which will hold the watch and straps and so on. So I think this is a good idea and, and is a well-conceived uh, concept. to just give you a little bit more when you buy the watch. Now, here is the watch in the dark, because I feel it's worth showing you the, the view of the, the luminescence of this watch before showing it on the wrist, because that, this completes the, the technical description of the watch. And the loom is extremely good, and surprisingly good, considering the amount of loom applied to the dial. Because you'll notice that uh, when, you was, when you were looking at the watch in the light, the luminescent markings um, in between each quadrant of the dial appeared somewhat, uh, somewhat small, but in the dark they glow extremely brightly and are just as legible as the larger and much deeper pools of, uh, of luminova, or superluminova in the case of this watch, um, in each of those applied markings um, at 12, 3, 6 and 9. The bezel also has these luminous markings, which are very well done, and I think the fact they haven't uh, loomed every graduation means that you have a slightly cleaner bezel to look at in the dark, and also gives a real symmetry to the watch, which I appreciate. The hands, naturally, are extremely legible, and the loom plot on the second hand is large enough to glow for just as long as the hands themselves, which, um, which, which is, is a real benefit. And you might notice there's actually some reflection which still comes off the dial as a result of the, the luminous hands, the luminosity of the hands, because they glow through their back as well as their front, and so you get this really wonderful view of the watch, which glows for an extremely long period of time. And whilst being extremely bright, it'll last a good eight or nine hours, which is really beyond what I would, I would expect from a watch at this price range, or even several times its price. So suffice to say that I'm very, very impressed. Now on my wrist, which is seven inches in circumference, the watch fits extremely well. And certainly it does look larger than it feels, which is, which is an interesting detail about this watch that because of that relatively short lug-to-lug -lug length in relation to the case size, as you can see, one really couldn't make the lugs much shorter than that on the case size of this, um, this, this dimension, and also on this design. Because of the curvature of it, and the fact that the case back is heavily domed, most of those 14.6mm of thickness just sink into the wrist effortlessly, and so you end up with a much thinner profile than you would expect. 
Also, because of the width of the strap and also the, the width of the lugs, one gets a very, very stable watch on the wrist, and so turning the 120-click bezel is, uh, is very, very easy, and you can line it very quickly um, without any sort of trouble. The crown, because of the overhang of the bezel, also doesn't really make it um, in, make any sort of contact with the wrist, and so there are no problems with regards, of it, uh, with regards to it digging into the wrist and causing discomfort. But instead you're left with just a very comfortable, because it's so well balanced, an extremely well-designed timepiece, which I think looks marvellous. And so, as I conclude this video, I think my closing notes are that this is just an extremely impressive watch. The standards of manufacturing are, are astounding for this sort of price, and the fact that you're able to get a watch with these specifications that can take this sort of water resistance, and which doesn't go to any sort of length in producing anything which is, is pointless. So, one doesn't see a varied finishing on the case, instead one just sees a very high standard of polishing. Similarly, the bracelet um, doesn't have anything which, uh, which is superfluous, it's just well designed to have a comfortable clasp to wear, it's easy to size, and it, it's designed in such a way as to be useful for the customer. And I really can't praise a watch more than that, because I think that that's really what you're paying for. I, I don't believe in snobbery with regards to brands, and so I think that if a brand at this sort of price is able to offer something which is very satisfactory in terms of quality, and is able to offer a, a tangible experience to the owner, which is equivalent to, to other watches, then it's doing very, very well. And the fact this has kept extremely good time, I've taken it swimming as well, so it's been underwater um, and has, has dealt perfectly fine with that, as is perfectly acceptable for a watch with this sort of depth rating. But overall, I'm extremely impressed, and I think, think for the price, this is an incredible product to take a look at. And so if you are interested, then uh, do take a look um, at their website, um, because I, I, I'll be curious to hear what you have to, have to say and, and what you think after watching this video and, uh, and and if you have a read of that, because it is a product which I've been very interested to, to take a look at, and I'm, I'm delighted to be able to give such high praise to the watch, um, because one simply doesn't expect it. And so tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this video, and indeed of this watch, um, and if you did enjoy the video, then do please like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to people to see more videos and content here in the future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Zalman the Watch Guy, out.